good day to all of you in this class we continue from uh, the previous class where we were discussing on uh, uh, the parasitics uh, present in the printed wiring boards in the last class we uh, had some discussion on the resistive parasitic that is uh, what is the track resistance and uh, what are its effects and how we go about estimating the track resistance. Today we shall continue and uh, try to understand how the parasitics like capacitance and inductance also come into the picture and uh, have a bearing on the operation of the circuits. Now coming to uh, the capacitance parasitics. So, let us start with the discussion on the capacitance parasitic component on the printed wiring board and how it is going to uh, have an effect on uh, the operation of the circuits. So, if you consider the printed wiring board of some thickness and we know the thickness of the printed wiring boards in most cases will be around 1.6 mm and you have the copper tracks which are placed on both the layers both the sides top and bottom. Now, let us say we have a copper track on the top top layer and let us say we have a copper track on the other layer the bottom layer this is a double sided PCB. Now, these copper tracks are separated by only this dielectric component which is the PCB material which um, is an epoxy uh, material which has a finite di relative uh, dielectric um, uh, strength uh, it is called a cons permittivity. Uh, the dielectric constants uh, are different for different uh, materials and for most of the printed wiring uh, uh, board materials. Uh, for example, this FR4 uh, type or even the G, G10 type of boards, you have an epsilon R, this is called the relative dielectric constant of the order of around 5.4 and if it is FR2 type of board. FR2, FR3 type of board, you have an epsilon R relative dielectric constant of around 4.8. So, uh, it will vary from uh, board material to board material, but uh, they are the order of magnitude that you would um, uh, come to experience with the most uh, common boards. Now, uh, Now, this copper track here and this copper track here separated by this dielectric of some known relative permittivity, we can estimate the capacitance C because they now act as two parallel plate capacitances epsilon the uh, dielectric constant A by D where A is the overlapping area and D is the distance which is the um, uh, in this in most cases 1.6 mm. So, this is one uh, way of having capacitance 
in the uh, printed wiring boards. You could also have capacitances on the same side. This is a printed wiring board. You could have a conductor which with some track width, let us say W and you could have another conductor carrying another signal having some track width, let us say same W with some spacing S. Yes. This is uh, slightly more complex because you could have tracks on the bottom side and then uh, the length of the track uh, could uh, need not be uh, always parallel, could vary and there are many other issues. Uh, un and uncertainties which will come in here. Of course, here also you can estimate the capacitance which occurs uh, between these two tracks. Uh, let us now see first how we go about estimating the capacitance okay, and then have a discussion on the effects of capacitance uh, in the circuits. First, let us uh, consider uh, capacitance of two conductors on opposite sides of the board. Okay. Then we shall come to capacitance uh, which are uh, on adjacent, this is adjacent tracks. So, now coming to the capacitance, between conductors on opposite sides of the PCB. Let us first find an estimate of C and we just now saw the formula, it is given by epsilon A and by B, uh, here the various um, symbols uh, are, uh, um, uh, will be uh, indicated now what it means. The capacitance here is expressed as P f. You, you see here uh, that there is a constant multiplication factor 8.86 into epsilon r. This is actually epsilon naught into epsilon r. Epsilon naught is the absolute uh, dielectric constant, absolute permittivity, which is around 8.854 uh, uh, into 10 power minus 12. Now, the 10 power minus 12 portion is taken out here and the capacitance is expressed as P f. You have epsilon r, which is the relative dielectric constant which varies from material to material, you will have to find it from the science tables or the manufacturer's data sheet. B, B is the dielectric thickness. Now, uh, dielectric thickness we are expressing it in me, uh, meters. Uh, the dielectric thickness is more or less fixed when you are talking of capacitance between conductors on opposite sides of the PCB because the dielectric is the PCB itself, the laminate itself and the thickness is more or less fixed in most of the common PCBs which is 1.6 mm. The uh, next uh, variable here you see is uh, A, uppercase A, overlap area. Uh, in uh, meter square. Uh, overlap area is uh, uh, basically the common area between the two tracks. If you see you have a track on the upper layer and a track on the bottom layer. So, if I come back to my uh, whiteboard here, you see that on this you have a track on the upper layer 
which goes like this. And the track on the bottom layer, which goes dotted as I am showing here. Now, this this is the smaller of the track and therefore, this area to whatever length is the area that is common to both the tracks. And now, these two common areas are the ones which will act like the two uh, plates of a parallel plate capacitance. So, you just take these common areas. Uh, and um, uh, and find the value of A, which would mean you take the smaller of the widths of these two tracks and if that is W and the length of the track, the length of the track which is L then W into L would be the common area. Now, coming back to our slide, you, uh, you see that there is one more um, uh, variable there epsilon r which is called the relative dielectric constant. The relative dielectric constant is something which is material dependent and it is a value 5.4 for some materials like G10, G11, FR4, FR5 which are the common laminate materials and you uh, have a value of 4.8 for FR2, FR3 type of materials and for any other type of material grades you will have to find it out from the uh, data sheets or science tables. Now, let us um, uh, find out what is the capacitance between adjacent conductors. Now, when we say adjacent conductors, I would like to bring uh, to your attention that I am meaning a situation like this W. Uh, uh, w is the width of one track and W here width of another track, then you have uh, the spacing between S yes, and then we need to find what is the capacitance which are, you see that you have air as the dielectric here, if you see in this spaces you have air as the dielectric and you see the distances are not uh, constant, they keep varying and then you, you have the uh, laminate material itself as a dielectric. So, it is a eutectic combination and difficult to have a closed form uh, solution. However, people have come up with some empirical rules which can be used for uh, finding the capacitance. Uh, uh, what is uh, normally given in the empirical rules is called uh, a, fa a factor called the coupling factor. coupling factor and this is expressed in picofarads per centimeter run of the track. So, for every centimeter run of the track, you will have so much P f resulting due to this particular uh, position of the uh, tracks, the adjacent tracks. So, this is um, uh, 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 this uh, is an empirical relationship and let me give you the empirical relationship with its uh, uh, various uh, symbols that is generally found in the literature and probably uh, you could use it as a basis uh, for at least uh, getting the near around the value of the capacitance that you would uh, uh, get by because of a particular routing. Now, going back to the slide you see that uh, the coupling factor which is expressed as 
picofarads per centimeter run of the track or the coupling it is also called coupling capacity is given by uh, this kind of a um, equation 0 0.122 into T by S plus 0 0.0905 1 plus epsilon R the dielectric constant into another factor A where you have A which is a logarithmic um, uh, which is a log of uh, a uh, function of, of a function which is formed from uh, W which is the width of the track and S which is the spacing between the tracks. So, S is the distance between two adjacent conductors uh, given in mm and T is the laminate uh, thickness again given in mm and we know the laminate uh, thickness in most of the uh, common PCBs it is 35 microns 35 micrometer and W is the conductor width in mm. Now, uh, this, uh, these are uh, the symbols and the empirical rule it may be tough for you to find out the uh, relationship just by looking at this uh, uh, equation. So, it is advisable that you put it into uh, as a program and try to get uh, a nomograph which will give you an idea of how uh, the capacitance varies with width and space uh, and uh, any other variable. So, what we shall uh, do now is do some calculations to get uh, an idea on the numbers. So, for this let us go back to our whiteboard. Uh, first let us do some uh, calculation for capacitance between conductors on opposite sides. of the PCB printed circuit board or printed wiring board. Now, we have uh, we, we, we have seen the uh, variables and symbols on the equations. Let us take some uh, numbers. The let us say that the two tracks uh, have a line width let us say we have a line width of 2 mm and a total common length that is the upper and the bottom track have a, a common length of around 250 mm as an example and the width line width of the bottom track is 4 mm. So, let us say this is our situation which would look something like this. So, you have a width of 2 mm, a bottom track of 4 mm and you have 1.6 mm thickness and the track runs for two fifty 
mm long. So, this is the situation and if you apply the uh, formula 8.86 into 5.4 this is our epsilon r ok. This is our epsilon r remember into the area. Now, the area is nothing but this is the smaller of the two tracks, this is the smaller of the two tracks having a track width of 2 mm and the length of 250 on the side. So, we will write it as 2 e minus 3 2 mm which is 2 e minus 3 meter into 250 e minus 3 meter which would give you meter square then divided by 1.6 e minus 3 is the distance uh, the dielectric uh, thickness. So, this should approximately I have recalculated it will be around 15 pico farads pfs. So, when you are talking of tracks between the opposite uh, sides you see that this top track could easily be a supply line. Supply line meaning the VCC line and the bottom track could be a ground line. Normally, the ground line is much thicker than uh, has a greater width than the uh, supply line. Uh, and this um, uh, capacitance between the supply and line and ground line for this kind of specification a 2 mm uh, supply line a 4 mm ground line for a 250 length common uh, length you have around 15 pf. This can be used as decoupling capacitors uh, uh, when, uh, when it is uh, a distributed decoupling capacitor. Um, as these two lines are connected to various uh, digital circuit loads which has like we saw in the last class the output stages of the gates being totem pole or composed of top and bottom switches where during switching transitions you will have huge current spikes. So, this uh, 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 capacitance between ground and supply is always good to have a higher value of capacitance lowering the impedance such that the supply and the ground lines are more stable. Now, coming to the uh, other um, uh, problem of uh, having the capacitance or trying to estimate the capacitance between adjacent tracks this is slightly more tricky. Uh, however, what we shall do is try to estimate using a, a simple program and I would recommend that you also try to do that by means of a program whichever is convenient to you. I am right now here going to use uh, an open source uh, package called Octave. You may have heard of it. You could also use uh, MATLAB. You could uh, use another open source uh, package called Scilab and probably there are many more. Okay. So, right now let me try to demonstrate to you the way the capacitance between these two tracks our interest is the capacitance between these two tracks mm, uh, some kind of a nomograph a graph uh, which will give us an idea of uh, uh, the relationship between the widths and the, uh, the spacings between the conductors. So, let us go back to uh, our so, going uh, uh, let, let me take up a terminal window. Now, on the terminal window let me uh, go to the octave environment 
and uh, you are there right now in the Octave environment and you are ready to execute a program. Uh, now before executing the program, I would like to show you what is inside, Le inside the Uh, this particular function. This is a simple script file. Basically, it is it is the same equation that I just put a few uh, moments ago. Uh, look at this, which I shall probably uh, mark it for your benefit. This is the same equation that uh, uh, I had been discussing. 0.122 into t dot slash s. Now, let me tell you why I am using dot slash uh, dot plus 0 0.0905 into 1 plus e r which is epsilon r basically. I have defined epsilon r as 5.4 in into a or dot star a. Now, uh, a is nothing but here the log to base 10 of function which is uh, consisting of uh, uh, the two variables w and s like given in the equation. Now, w is a width which I am taking it as 1 mm. Okay. T is uh, you, you could see here T is 35 mm. laminate thickness and uh, now this is something which is different. I would like to see a nomo graph plotted with x axis as the spacing between the conductors. So, what I am right now doing here is uh, trying to get a graph with respect to the spacing s. s is nothing but values ranging from 0. 1, 2, 5 in steps of 0 0.1. So, this is what uh, S is. Now, S becomes an array. So, when you are using array, I cannot do direct multiplication or division. So, this dot operation, these dot operations, what they basically do is they try to do the operation on every element of the array. So, this is a scalar value w which is uh, uh, operating with this particular operator on every element of s. Likewise, uh, likewise the multiplication and so on. And uh, uh, then we would like to see a plot, plot of the coupling factor or coupling capacity uh, with the x axis being mm and the y axis being the uh, coupling capacity in pf uh, per centimeter. Uh, then after that we would also like to see not only with respect to uh, s and also with respect to the width of the track w. So, next I make the width of the track as uh, uh, a vector. Uh, from point 1 to 5 in uh, with uh, steps of uh, point 0 0.1 and then s is just 1 mm the spacing between the tracks of 1 mm and ag ab again we apply the same two equations and then we plot. Okay. So, this is uh, what we I would uh, want to uh, do end of the function. The function is named as pf cm pf per centimeter plot. Okay. So, let us uh, plot and see what uh, we see. Now, going back to the terminal window in octave here, I will call that function p f c m plot. So, here the let us see this figure. Now, this y axis gives coupling capacity in pf per centimeter. The x axis gives you the spacing s. Remember come back to uh, the uh, 
figure here S is the spacing between the tracks <coughs> W is the width and we are interested in finding the capacitance between these two tracks. Okay, keep that in mind and uh, uh, try to look at this uh, figure in that, uh, uh, in that viewpoint. The capacitance per centimeter. So, if you take 1 centimeter length, you have this amount of capacitance, and this capacitance is decreasing as a function of yes, more the spacing, smaller the value of capacitance, and that is what we expect it to happen. And uh, what happens for the other? Look that there is a change now. We are now uh, change the x axis to width in mm and y axis is still the coupling capacity in pf per centimeter. As the width increases, the coupling capacity in increases. So, more the width, higher is the coupling capacity. So, therefore, when you want to, uh, when you want uh, to have ground and supply lines, let us say one layer is uh, supply line and another layer is the ground line, you try to make the coupling capacity as much as possible, so that you get more capacitor or less uh, lesser impedance between the uh, supply and the ground, uh, so that they are able to give much more uh, value of spike currents when the digital circuits go through transitions. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, increasing the width will give you more capacitance between the two lines. So, this is uh, what we would be um, uh, learning from this uh, exercise. This exercise on uh, the capacitance. Now, coming back to the uh, board, uh, the white board. I would like to bring to your um, uh, attention that the capacitance between the lines has not only positive effects, but sometimes uh, you have both and you have negative effects also. You will have to uh, be cautious what is going to happen when you do a particular routing. Typically, for example, if you see uh, a circuit like this, let us say you have a high frequency amplifier. Let us say this is a high frequency amplifier. And to this, let us say you have some input and you have an output. I am showing this high frequency amplifier just as a block with an input and an output. But, but you should note that you should note that the uh, input and output of a high frequency amplifier may be routed differently on the printed wiring board. For example, they could be routed like this. Let us say you have the input in and you have one root. Okay. Now, I will still continue to put the high frequency amplifier in a block. There may be many circuits within that. This is your HF amp and probably the root could go in this fashion. Let us say, 
the uh, routing is in this fashion. So, if you uh, uh, if there is a now there will be definitely because this is an amplifier you will have a ground point somewhere you will have ground lines ok. You may have ground lines here this is it depends upon the routing ok. So, if you want probably you could show the ground line in green to make a distinction. Now, this is a ground line coming from other parts of the circuit. Now, the problem is I could have a capacitance between this track and this track that is capacitance between the in track and the ground line here you have a capacitance. I could have a capacitance between this output track here and another track the ground track here ok. So, which could be something like this not only that you could also have a parasitic capacitance between these two tracks the input track and the output track this is the output track O u 2 e. Now, when when a situation is like this you see you consider the non idealities we have considered only two non idealities till now uh, we have discussed about them which is the resistance and the capacitance. This has also inductive non idealities however, we will come to the inductive non ideality later, but just taking these two non idealities you will see that you also have due to this track um, uh, due to the track resistance a resistance here you could have a resistance here a resistance here and here so on. So, effectively what would happen it would look like you have circuit wise I have in and I have a resistance a capacitance maybe resistance like that then you have your high frequency amp you have resistance capacitance and you have the output and not only that you also have a direct feed through capacitance coming to the output something like the Miller effect a feedback kind of a capacit uh, a capacitance between the input and the output and this uh, Miller effect can also be quite a, a disturbing thing in the functioning. So, if you see effectively this high frequency amplifier is having a low pass filter at the front end a low pass filter at the um, uh, post uh, that is output end and then uh, you have a Miller effect capacitance coming to the picture all because of these parasitics as you see quite dangerous para parasitics. So, what effectively happens is that your the bandwidth of your high frequency amplifier gets limited it becomes um, because of these low pass um, filters the bandwidth is much limited compared to what you would actually have designed ok. So, these are some of the effects that would come into play if you are not careful you probably would have to uh, decrease the value of these capacitance. How does one go about decreasing the value of these capacitance? These are some of the issues that we need to uh, have a look at probably by putting guards probably by uh, putting in between uh, um, uh, uh, um, 
uh, in between tracks which will increase the impedance between the ground which will increase the impedance between the input and output. So, let us see how uh, those uh, effects are uh, uh, avoided to some extent uh, after we finish the discussion on uh, the inductance. We will revisit the issue of capacitance and also again the issue of resistance after we have finished the third uh, parasitic which is the inductance and then see as a whole how we try to uh, um, uh, avoid um, uh, major problems and also some set of guidelines where if we follow that the iteration will come down. Okay. So, now the uh, third uh, component the parasitic which becomes uh, quite important to us uh, in dealing with circuits on printed wiring boards is that of an inductance which is uh, parasitic which is a very very dangerous parasitic uh, that combined with the uh, capacitance can cause uh, quite a lot of havoc in the uh, electronic circuits what you thought you have designed for will uh, definitely um, not be uh, the same circuit when you put them into the PCB especially for high frequency uh, signals and uh, uh, you should keep in mind that uh, though the uh, supply lines which we uh, think are DC you just need a DC model for the supply and the ground lines. But unfortunately you see that in the uh, high speed circuits and digital circuits during transitions as I have been always saying you have spiky currents and these spiky currents have rise times and these rise times are very very high frequencies. So, actually high frequency spiky currents flow through the grounds and the supply lines and disturb the stability of the potentials on the supply and the grounds and these can really cause great havoc in the uh, high speed circuits. Uh, so, let us see what we uh, uh, what we would like to uh, look at uh, in the inductance. Inductance uh, if you take even if you have just a single single conductor even if you have just a single conductor with some current flowing through. and let us say that current is I. Now, by the uh, Fleming's um, uh, the right hand rule uh, if you point the thumb point the thumb in this direction and the direction in which the finger fingers coil around the conductor will give you the direction of the flux which is going to Uh, be around the conductor. Now, this is how the flux. So, any current that flows through the conductor uh, will uh, give you a flux around it in this fashion. Now, the flux is a continuum is a continuous variable. meaning it is a state variable it cannot uh, change instantaneously uh, uh, because of uh, the nature of the flux variable being a continuous variable. Uh, uh, the dynamics of the current is limited uh, because of uh, this uh, particular effect because if the current changes um, uh, uh, supposed to change value immediately then that would mean an immediate change in the flux which nature does not permit and therefore, current will not change immediately and that effect is called the inductance effect and that is what we represent by these inductors. And uh, the uh, equivalently when we say that the flux um, uh, any flow of current there is a flux which is set up around the conductor there is some energy which is stored and that energy is a continuous variable. So, you cannot immediately remove it or uh, immediately put energy into that one. 
So, there is some dynamics involved. Now, this is called the self inductance of the conductor. self inductance of the conductor this is one such issue that you will come across. Another problem that you would come across is when, when let us say you have a circuit and this is at a positive potential V and you have some circuit which does some job there is a current which flows in here and then there is a ground and this ground is coming through the tracks to some point here. So, let us say the tracks like that comes to the connectors this is the ground and this is the V. Now, if you look at just the current, the current takes off from here like that goes in this fashion goes into the circuit and does lot of operation comes out through this and back again here. So, if you look at this part it is like a loop. this is a loop. So, if a current flows in a loop or a coil there is a flux phi or B which is set up uh, which goes um, perpendicular to the uh, cross sectional phase of the uh, coil area or the coil phase in this case you have the loop and therefore, you need to have you probably you will have a flux which goes perpendicular to the face of the coil. And it, it will go and then complete complete the loop from some other circuit through some other uh, circuit or maybe even uh, free air. Now, a flux which is going through this loop would imply that the current in the loop cannot change instantaneously which means an inductance is set up here. It is a parasitic here or here all distributed, but being showed lump. So, a inductance can be set up just by a current carrying conductor self inductance. It could also be set up by a a uh, current flowing in a loop by a current going in the forward path and return path. This has not only the self inductance because of the current flowing in the it also produces flux in a perpendicular uh, in a, uh, in a uh, manner perpendicular to the face of the coil or the loop it has dangerous um, consequences in the sense that if I am having another circuit here, let us say another circuit here unconnected with that probably doing some other job and it is now this flux when it goes back it has to all flux or closed paths it has to always reach uh, where it started. So, this will pass through pass through a loop of another circuit and it will induce it will induce a voltage here proportional to the value which is there in this loop. So, uh, a current flowing here can induce a voltage in this loop or a current flowing in this loop can induce a voltage in this loop. So, this is called mutual inductance effect. 
So, we have the mutual inductance effect, self inductance effect, series inductor inductance effect, all these effects uh, can really change the way the circuit behaves when they are put onto the printed wiring boards. Now, how do we go about estimating the value of the inductance? So, let us uh, take, uh, uh, take a, a simple case first of finding the value of the inductance. We take just the PCB and then we consider a conductor. And let us see uh, what we need to do to get the value of the inductance. We have a conductor of width W here. We could also have another conductor here of width W and spacing S just like what we had written down for the capacitance. But keep in mind that there are a lot of uncertainties. This is also an empirical rule that I will be giving you now, which will give you L per unit length. So, you can call it as the inductance factor. Nano Henry per centimeter that is what we will be having. Now, let us go back to the uh, slide and see uh, how we go about estimating the inductance value. So, we had um, left off at this point. Let us now uh, look at the inductance between the adjacent conductors, which is given in terms of nano Henry per centimeter. The per unit inductance is given in terms of this empirical relationship 9.21 into log base 10. S plus W by T by W, T is the thickness of the laminate plus 6 minus A, where A is given by um, another empirical relationship like this, where L again is the length of the track. Okay. So, the various uh, symbols, the S which is used here and here is nothing but the distance between the two adjacent conductors in mm. T is the laminate thickness in mm and as we know it is 35 microns uh, for the most common laminates. Uh, w is the uh, conductor width and L is the parallel run length meaning in centimeters because we are giving it in nh per centimeter. So, what is the length of the conductor that you are interested in? So, just like we did for the capacitance, I have here for you um, uh, another uh, another function called Dano Henry uh, NH CM plot, where, wherein we want to see what is the uh, nomograph or how does the nano Henry per centimeter vary uh, with the uh, spacing between the conductors and the width of the conductors. Just like before I have put in the two equations, uh, I put in the equations for uh, uh, the uh, inductance per unit length here. And I use the dot operators just like before because the first case I want to see with respect to the uh, space giving 
width as 1 width as 1 mm for the track and in the other case I am giving the spacing between tracks as uh, 1 mm and then you have the plots for the two, uh, uh, two figures one with respect to spacing another with respect to the width. So, now if you execute this in octave, so let me open octave and then execute nano Henry CM plot function. So, we see the plot where on the x axis you see spacing between the tracks of the conductors and here the per unit inductance in nano Henry per centimeter length. Okay. See that with the spacing the inductance value is increasing. So, if you space the tracks more and more wide you are creating a larger and larger loop area and this larger and larger loop area results in more uh, inductance and this has more mutual inductance capability which can link to uh, other circuits. Okay. So, that is uh, one important uh, uh, point that you should remember. Uh, the other figure with respect to the width you see here the width in mm and the per unit inductance nano Henry per centimeter. This is decreasing from 40 nano Henry in this particular case for 1 mm, uh, 1 mm uh, width and spacing. What happens here is that as the width is increasing the inductance value is decreasing. So, more the width uh, lesser is the loop area and um, uh, lesser is the uh, self and the mutual inductance that results out of it. So, therefore, we have um, uh, we uh, uh, you should note that when we are talking of supply and ground lines we need to have wider tracks, wider the track lesser will be the inductance wider the track more is the capacitance, we want more capacitance less inductance therefore, um, uh, it is good to go for wide tracks for the supply and the uh, ground lines. So, that you have more uh, stable grounds. So, we saw that in the last class and this class uh, we had a look at the various uh, parasitics mainly the resistance, capacitance and the inductance uh, parasitics that will appear on the printed wiring boards. And in the next class we will see how we uh, will be able to take care of some of the problems that come out of these parasitics. Thank you.